Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we have been in the LZ Alpha without a dozen duplicates for about 750 cycles now. Big milestones, big milestones. Definitely the longest running colony I have ever, ever, ever had. And mostly it's because we've been working on this same thing here for the longest time. But don't worry, we're not even going to be looking at that for now because I have a problem. Up over here, you can see that this thermal aqua tuna, this is just kind of turning over but the steam geyser has gone dormant and it's going to be dormant for 30 cycles the problem is the temperature gradient from up there to down here is quite strong i don't know whether actually this shows it now unfortunately as soon as the steam or you know as soon as the temperature goes up above 100 degrees above the boiling point of water all you get is red and, and you know that's kind of that's kind of annoying. This is 82 up here. This is 140, and this is 209. Very wide, different groups of uh, of numbers. Kind of all look the same. So you know it's, it, that's not overly helpful. But the problem is that the temperature is not transferring up here to this thermo sensor quick enough, so that the cooling is not coming down and landing on our thermal aqua tuner. As you can see, it is steadily climbing at about a degree a second. That means we're going to be in trouble in the, oh, I don't know a sixth of a cycle, something like that. I've got one of two ways that I could do with this I could either use a whole bunch of temperature shift plates to try and move the temperature upwards but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thermo, uh, thermo sensor here uh, pop that down like this oh that's an on and off isn't it okay that's fine uh, and then just run a little bit of automation wire up into this system which is the one that does the cooling all right that hopefully should work out I never understand why they have an or gate I mean I suppose if you don't want to have the green yeah right, isn't it the case that what when either one of these are going to be putting out green, a green signal is going to be going. I, I kind of thought it was. I kind of thought it was. All right, the other thing I want to do is destroy everything that we have here whilst I'm getting ac access. Okay, right, here we go. We're going to we're gonna do this. I'm going to press P, no, uh, P0, in fact, because this is something that we want to get done as quick as possible. Now, I didn't really want to get these deconstructs done. Let me go. Let me just sort this out quick. Oh yeah, I suppose it could be a little bit more uh, more nuanced about it, but let's go! Let's have some amazing alarms going off, and let's watch these duplicates go through. Obviously, the first stumbling block is going to be getting these tiles down, but the moment these go down, everyone is going to jump into action. Another thing that I think I might want to do is actually include one of those temperature shift plates. Now, unfortunately, we're out of diamond, so I think I might just build it. Well, we know, I know we've got aluminium up here, so let's go ahead and do that. That's not the end of the cycle, is it? Ah, oh, that... That's bad, yo. That is bad. Okay, next cycle. Everyone obviously got their government mandated sleep. And things are starting to get a little bit warm out here as well. This is why we like to add the insulated tiles over the covering here. Brum, our newest boy, the one who's uh, really better at ranching than anything else, has decided that he wants to come over here and do some of the more uh, important dip builds. That's fine. He's paying me a lot of money, so that's cool. Uh, but we uh, we could really do with people who are a little bit faster, a little bit nippier at it. Okay, in here we got the thermo sensor. If above 200 is where I want to be, because that's when we're going to start having some troubles. Let's have a look and see what's going on with the uh, automation signal now. It should be sending green signal, which it should do, if it's above 200. Are we above 200 yet? No, we're only 174. That's good. Ish. Right now, whilst we're watching our batteries, man, we're just waiting on Brum to go and grab some steel and put it in this sweep-only box that I've got here, uh, because I wanted to get the steel out of here before I close it down. It looks like putting down these two temperature shift plates was actually just what we needed to try and pull the temperature out of there. I know, crazy, who'd have thought temperature shift plates were the way forwards, but there we are, that is that. Problem solved. Thanks very much for bearing with me for this intro. Anyway, with that grizzly business dealt with, what do I actually want to do today? Well, what I actually want to do today is to uh, open up my stations and go, oh, wait, hang about, we haven't researched the... Uh we haven't researched the telescope yet. That's that's a, a big shame. We need to get on that right away because actually the thing that I want to do today is start working towards space because it's about time. <laughs> We've been making steel for a little while now. We've got access to the tiles that can repel the blows from the meteors. Uh, we just need to do the research, as I said, so we can start detecting the meteors and maybe start thinking about opening this area up and uh, how I'm going to do this. I've never built a telescope before. As you may have noticed, I'm, I'm not an expert at this game, even though I've been playing it since early alpha. Oh, I feel shame. But anyway, <laughs> we, we should be able to try and figure this out. We, the telescope research is literally the only thing we're waiting for, and we've just got to hope hope the forest can blow the dust off of these old, old machines here, remember how the research works, and get on with his job. 
I've got to say, less than half a day later and Forrest has been knocking this out of the park. Over 10 points already. Wow. On both. Both researchers. All right, downtime's been called for the first cycle. Let's have a look and see how well Forrest did. 34 and 28 out of 50 and 70. Oh, he nearly... Tomorrow. Tomorrow he's going to get it. I think something else we might need to do whilst we're waiting for Forrest to do all the research is uh, expose the top edge of the map. We need to uh, to get in here and start digging. Mr. Sorry started putting some drywall up for me, but actually I'm going to come down, uh, I don't know, a few dozen few dozen blocks down here and uh, just go go for a big old tunnel to the side i do believe this is the furthest direction we've got to travel so let's get going with that first and then we'll come this way afterwards want to encounter open gaps i'm going to be trying to make mesh tiles out of the local materials found around i don't think i can make it out of rust unfortunately let's have a quick look in here and double check that no copper aluminium iron gold and uh wolframite i'm not going to be making out of steel that's a little bit precious right now i'd like to be at the point to be able to uh to make that decision but now is not that moment i'm just watching where that water goes it's not a problem uh, over here making it out of wolframite because that's literally what we're ripping it out of the walls got some searingly hot materials in this uh, storage container here and that's that's what's causing this perpetual rain cloud that's going on this lead was doing most of the work it was transferring its heat out really really fast but seems to have dropped its temperature mostly now i'm gonna kick myself if, if it was this no all right Whilst waiting for all the other jobs to be done, I'm also trying to keep an eye on this lava egg here because, of course, we want to move him down via the magic of the storage container into this area to give his little brother a little bit of help trying to eat all this carbon dioxide. I have turned this little crusher on just to uh, keep trying to keep the uh, the carbon dioxide into manageable levels. And in fact, it seems to be going a little bit better than I would like it to. We were at five, car uh, five kilos per tile last time I looked, and we're now down at three. So how about we extend this timer a little longer? Okay, so I found a little bit of a problem going on down in my uh, my petroleum generator room here. We're not producing enough temperature, it turns out, to stop the water condensing down in the bottom here. I really was hoping that wouldn't be the case. I think, actually, if I just move this temperature shift plate down a few more, we'll also get the desired effect. I know that wasn't diamond, but whatever. We'll, we'll make do for now. But... I have got a big, big problem. You can see it's been pumping a lot of water out of here and it's been moving it over to this area here where there is a lot of steam. And <clears throat> that's not the biggest problem because we've got a crusher up here that we can use to uh, to get rid of it. Also, whilst, while I'm at it, I've got to get rid of that. But I've, uh, I've asked for them to come along and do this, but of course... Uh, it wasn't it wasn't really possible at late at night so I, I did a quick blip of red alert to get luna coming down and i'm sorry that you're going to be uh, missing out once again everybody else got up during that time of red alert which uh, i find a little bit a little bit uh, unusual but, but that's fine you know they all made it outside and then went back in yep yeah, a bit of midnight exercise who doesn't like getting up and running around for absolutely no reason during the middle of their sleep cycle i mean i i would i would welcome the opportunity obviously obviously okay when luna does that i'm also gonna go ahead and grab my plumbing here uh grab a liquid filter oh let me come back here i'm not expecting luna to come and do this straight away but i do need to start uh, laying down provision for what we're going to do about this uh, i in fact wanting to break this other piece of insulated pipe as well because this is going to be where we carry on and assume that we've got some water out of here and we are also going to grab this insulated pipe and then do that and into there all right beautiful that should now give us a working system oh mad frank oh you've made a mess but that's because you're in a big big trouble let's just do that and see what he does shall we uh hopefully he's gonna dig down now the big trouble that we know about this is that people who make a mess inside their exosuit tend to keep it inside the exosuit until they can go and take that off and as you can see he wants to go and do that right now so let's follow along in this magical mystical journey and see uh what mess actually happens here all right that's that's pretty nasty, but nothing that we can't handle. Just going to mop it up. Oh, overnight, the research got done. It probably wasn't overnight. I just uh, blanked it out. Okay, what are we going to do with a, with a, a telescope? Well, we're going to go have a look. We're going to click on this, and we're going to see what it needs. Now, it needs some power. It needs some... Uh, gas pipe going in for oxygen it needs duplicate operation it produces heat so we need to get some cooling on the go out here uh, and we need to protect it from the horrors of what goes on up here so i think the way that i'm going to do this i'm going to have a, a telescope in the middle here and then have space scanners either side who's fleeing what's going on over here hey br brum 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 P please please no 
Please no. Uh, move you over here. Does, does that mean you're going to immediately start getting back on it? Brum, you, you've got to run, mate. You have, you've got to get out of there. Okay, he's angry because there's a poke shell. Oh, there's two of them. There's two of them. Uh, somewhere in here, there should be an egg, and that's what they're getting angry over. Unless Brum has managed to do something ridiculous. I don't know. He's, um... He's full on gonna die. How, how do I stop this happening? He's incapacitated. Can we get a friend to come along and help him? Is that is that a thing we can do? Best be. Who 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 would actually be the highest pro? Doctor Captain Subs, are you gonna come along and help your friend out here or what? Do you have no? Um, how 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 is this gonna help? Look, he's already been assigned. Who's gonna move him? This is the next question. Brum is kind of on it, but he can't get up and do so. Hmm. It says he's dying. I'm really not happy about that. Ah, here comes Forrest to uh, rescue his friend. Now, is he going to be able to do it before he gets uh, picked on by the poke shell over here? No, no. It looks like we're going to be okay. That's... Oh, this guy. Very angry. No idea why. It's normally because there's an egg around, but I don't see the egg anywhere. Is it just because he's hungry? Could be because he's hungry. I don't know. Yeah, uh, there's some nuance here that I'm not understanding. We'll have to figure that out. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I'm going to just kind of drag a great big dig order across here and let's see what happens with it, shall we? Okay, let's just, for the moment, put that there. And that's kind of just, just something to think about. That's, a, a, that's a, a placement, a placeholder, a working title, if you will. Not sure whether we're going to end up using it or not, but there it is. Oh, incidentally, all this time I was like, wouldn't it be great if there was a way to see what gases were filling in here? Well, actually, if you just click the gas, it shows you exactly what's going on in there because it's not trying to show you the overlay of the doors as well. Oh, not again. <laughs> Why are you angry? What's going on? What's wrong with you? Oh no, what has happened to bro- Look at him! How do we- How do we fix this? We get him to unequip his suit, and that should allow him to move a little faster, but how do we get him food? He's gonna starve before he gets there. Look at this, a thousand calories, but oh, it's so slow. There's food right there, Brom. There is food right there. Can we get him to go get it? Probably not. Okay, I've asked him just to come and stand up here. Let's see what he does when it's done. I, I can tell that most of his problems are because of the... What's he going now? Eat self. Yeah, yeah okay, that's good. That's good. Go, let's, let's speed up time and let's see if he can deal with himself. We're going to spend a lot of time following Brum around at the moment, it turns out, just to make sure he actually goes about actually getting food and things like that. What's he got? He's got some meal ice there. Now he's going to what? Try and make his way to somewhere to eat, which thankfully he can do in the triage cot down here. Okay, it looks like we may have solved this one particular issue, but wow, that's... That's a problem that we need to try and make sure doesn't happen again. Okay, in an effort to try and deal with this problem here, somewhere in here, I think it's organic. We can go down and find polluted dirt and rock piles. These are both things we want to make sure are kept in this little storage center here. Uh, actually, I've gone and done this and realized that this is not at all what I want to have in this place. Let me deconstruct this and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, thank you very much, Mad Frank. I actually want to put an automatic dispensing system here. That would be much... Much, much better. I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this copper wire here and put that into there. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so this automatic dispenser that I've got here, I'm gonna ask it to hold polluted dirt and rot piles at the fairly high priority there. I'm also then gonna set up a timer if I can get this here. I'm gonna go red duration 600. No, let's go 599. And then uh, the actual duration here is gonna be one. And that means that once per cycle, because that's what that works out to, this will send out a green signal. I think there is a better way of doing that. There's like a cycle sensor here. We could we could give it a signal then instead out of that. Uh, but I, I threw that the one down out of reflex so we're gonna work with it for now ha, remember when i put this in i was like we've got to make sure we take it away again afterwards <laughs> i forgot to take it away i mean i am not even sure if i got the right thing to deconstruct there we're just gonna have to keep an eye on it and find out okay mad frank came along he took that away yes it looks like it is working beautiful beautiful hopefully that will then mean that this hydrogen can flow Oh, I'm not sure what it was, but something hot got put in one of these. I saw a little bubble of steam come erupting out of here, and now we have a little bit of a rain cloud forming again. I do like it, don't get me wrong, but maybe we should put some sort of, like, trapping device over this side. Anyway, the thing that I'm doing with the wastewater that I really didn't want to come out of here because it's now not cooling this area down is just dumping it in this area. It seems to be the best thing to do with water that's quite warm but not too warm. Uh, of course, we will have another outlook 
one coming out with uh, cooler water at a later point. It's just this was a snake and we have to deal with it. All right, problem fixed, hopefully. We will start getting some petroleum back in. That'll raise the temperature back up. Oh, it, should, it should actually work out from here. All right, finally, the list of jobs has gone around to including the ones up here. Are they going to go to the digging or do they just want to build a ladder? Who knows? It could go either way at this point. Uh, looks like it is the ladder. No, we are clearing out space for the telescope. I'm not even sure what I've built it out of here. Iron ore. I'm not sure how hot it's going to get. It does produce heat, but, you know, we can we can cool this stuff down. We, we, we have, like, all this ethanol down here for starters, which is one of the best liquids for uh, for storing cold or, you know, the, uh, the thermal capacity and the heat... Thermal conductivity and the heat capacity, sorry, are both very, very good. It's just they've got a very narrow range of temperatures to work in. But as long as we can keep it within that range of temperatures, and we can, it is super, super effective. Ah, always a downtime to ruin my fun. Oh, we've been waiting for this for a while. Brom has a single skill point. That means he's becoming a rancher. Beautiful. Get out there and get ranching. So I was noticing a small problem down here. Where we've got this thermo sensor turning on the cooling, this thermo aqua tuner is actually dropping below 100 degrees. This is causing the water to condense and come down into this liquid pump down here. This is then coming up and jamming up all this area, uh, all this pipe area back here. And one thing I noticed is we were just losing water to coming up over here. Now that's not too bad if it was like a little bit, but it was turning out that it was practically all of the water. So what I've done is I've put in another liquid filter right here and as soon as this last bit of pipe gets put into place, it should now be returning all the water back into this storage bin. Nice, nice. All right, let's go and have a look and see what's going on at the top of the map. Hopefully, we've had it so they've built themselves the... Ah, they've still not built that telescope. Unreachable dig? Why? Let's try that. Let's, let's see if that helps. Yes. Yes, that did help. Quite a lot. <laughs> not enough, though. Need to put a ladder in. Wow. <laughs> We've got this one little uh, block of rock here that just doesn't want to get dug. Um. On the plus side, though, it's given us a load of time to be able to build this transverse tunnel to see uh, what's going on with the top of the map here, because, man, I want to get this all exposed. You can see that this is an edge and this is an edge, and this is about the only time we've got both edges exposed. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that some more, shall we? So watching this gas overlay overnight, I realized that we are having a, quite a serious bottleneck by only using a single line of gas pipes here. As you can see, we've got more than enough coming in through this line, and then we're adding more to it uh, every time. So I was thinking maybe we can get a second line going down here, and then I've done some sort of weird double bridge effect here. So the first one we'll put into the pipe if it can, uh, and then it'll pick that up by preference if it can, before then, if it can't put it into there, passing it on to do the same again with the next line and the next line and hopefully refill these atmospheric suits in double the time fingers crossed all right the gas flows let's see how the theory flows uh, unfortunately we've lost most of the oxygen out of the system now but we'll we'll see if it works so it should put these three gas bubbles into this line while this lot's carrying on over the top why isn't it passing down that's the next question i've got okay it seems to have broken the original system I'm not sure how. I mean, I totally do see why, but come on. So what's happening is this pipe here, this uh, bridge here, is putting out, and then the package from here is not deciding whether to go up or down. Uh, I want it to go down. Uh. Let's just try taking these bridges out and see if the whole thing falls apart. I kind of think like it will, but we'll find out. We'll find... Oh, yeah, no, that's really not going to work, is it? That's really, really not going to work. Maybe this pipe actually needed... Let's cancel these to be on top. Yes. Okay, I think we can safely call this one a little bit of a mess, but if we come and have a look at what's going on here, it's coming up, and the first thing it's doing is trying to supplement this line here. If it can do so, great. It'll just take the power, the uh, oxygen out of that, and no problem. It then jumps over these lines over here, bub, 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 and then tries to add to that one again. Maybe this one's not necessary. We could probably take this one away. Give me that gas bridge there. Let's deconstruct it. Okay, beautiful. Uh, it jumps over and then tries to add to this one. The reason it's not necessary here is because this is the first turning off. You see, there's not a turn turning in between this edition and the edition we've just taken out. Uh, so this is the next one we want to say. So if this is full with all these gases, great, it'll, the oxygen will move on to the next little bridge here. If that's full, it'll move on, etc, etc, and should add up a lot better and keep the flow running. I, I hope. I really, really do. <laughs> 
I would be like, excuse my little uh, oxygenation tangent here, but that's that's pretty much the totality of my episodes. It's like, hey guys, we're going to do this. Tangent, 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 tangent. We didn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was supposed to be keeping an eye on this guy. Oh, he became a, a slickster before it. Ah, he had a little egg. I wanted to move the egg. Oh, no. Okay, I'm gonna do... Oh, no, I can't I can't just ask them to pick them, all of them up. I need to sweep all the eggs individually. Uh, because if we keep them in here long term, then they start taking start taking damage. So my plan is... Sorry, I, I, I realise this is a plan that's held over from a couple of episodes ago, so not all of you are going to be up to speed. These guys in here, they're getting quite uh, overcrowded and glum. So the idea is to pick up the eggs and move them down below. Now, I'm using the, the wondrous magic of the storage containers because they have the, the critter egg. Oh, excuse me, why? Quick save. Auto save, sorry, not quick save. Uh, the creator egg, so I can move that down there. But if they spend uh, any time at all in the storage container, they actually start losing viability, uh, and after a little while, will die. So I want to try and move them down there. But there was a, there was, he, he was in an incubator, so he was growing quicker. So I wanted to move him down like at about fifty percent or so. Ah, well, you know, bad timings. Oh look, the poke, poke shells are multiplying. Oh, that's beautiful. Ah, uh, yeah, the two ranch ranchers hard at work. This is exactly what I wanted when we set these guys up. I'm not sure exactly who else we need to to get uh, extra ranchers for. So I notice a lot of the time this critter feeder is empty. That means, if we have a look, both Luna and uh, Jelly are a little bit overwhelmed. So maybe we need a new supply guy. That, that could definitely be a thing. I mean, we do have one spare Atmo dock. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Let's see who's in here cooking no no building a suit wearing no operating digging no i'll take these blossom seeds but that's about it oh oh they did it at some point oh they did it i didn't realize oh there's one of them the shove vault it, you know it took me a, a long time much much longer than i would like to admit to realize that these have a name that, that is very similar to the thing that you use to dig dirt out with you know the shovel <laughs> Anyway, we've got to be a little bit careful of these guys. If they get into the main hole over here, they can start breaking down uh, actual materials. So their job up here is to eat the regolith. Uh, there are meteors coming down and they destroy, uh, they break up stuff. But that means that there is a constant influx of material. So these shovels go around and everything that they eat, any piece of... Um, regolith or whatever that they, they they bury into i can't remember the exact mechanic of it but they uh, they will consume half of the mass of now that that is terrifying if they get down into into this base and start eating i don't know a diamond supply or something like that so i i want to i want to really be careful so they can't travel through abyssalite big thumbs up about that and they can't travel through obsidian tiles that's why i've got this sort of elaborate airlock here they can't get through pneumatic doors but they can go through manual and um and auto airlocks so you know we've, we've got to be careful about that another thing i've noticed over here we've got to break in the abyssalite so maybe at some point we have fairly high priority we want to come along and do this i'm not sure how we're going to make that happen but at the same time you know there's uh, there's some wonders over there so let's go and have a look for those shall we you know that tangent thing i was just talking about <laughs> Look, 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 there. He just went through this door. We have got to be super careful. That's why I've got two. That's why I've got two here. Hopefully, he'll just move on and we'll not have to worry about it. Oh, they terrify me. They really do. All right, anyway, whilst they're going along to do those tiles, what does this thing need? So, no analysis focus selected. That's fine. Power wire needs to be connected. We can work on that. No gas intake and no line of sight. So, the line of sight is about clearing all this up here. That is fine. We also need to figure out exactly what width we need. So, if I'm going to get a mesh tile out here, I believe, as I said, that the... Uh Focal, focal point is above the where the telescope comes out of the out of the the, the the drawing here and then is it five on either side i'm gonna go five on either side just for uh just to be safe so now i've got this little area up here and i want to protect this with bunker doors this isn't going to be its final form i'm just kind of thinking out loud to try and figure out what it is i exactly want here something like this i need more steel that's what i want i want more steel Oh, this is why both of these were not set to anything. It was uh, a little disappoint, actually, to find that. Very disappoint. Uh, refined carbon's on, uh, on go. But I also, 
I also want to make some ceramic. I understand that it is one of the better insulating materials. So I'm just going to make, I don't know, let's say 100 of these. Uh, and then we'll be able to use it. I mean, like, look at this. Overheat temperature plus 200 and an insulator. It, uh, retains heat because energy transfers slowly through this material with low thermal conductivity. Beautiful. I don't think we have enough clay, but oh well. We'll, we'll find out. I mean, do I, do I, do I kill it? Oh, I don't know if I want to kill it. Answers down below. Like this, this is literally going to have to come down to you guys. This guy seems to be trapped in this bit of mathic rock, this bit of mathic rock, and our doorway. It's um, it's scary because if he comes through at this time, look. Did you see that? He could totally, totally make his way through here. In fact, so much that I'm going to put an extra door up. I can't. Why? Is it because of the drywall? Is there not drywall behind this? Oh, he's so happy. I don't I don't want to kill him. I feel bad. <laughs> oh, it turns out he'll only eat regolith dirt and iron ore. That's not as bad as the internet was uh, making it out to be. Okay, it looks like Operation Obsidian Shield is a shining success. Let's submit a little bio scan here. It doesn't say who's going to do it. Does it say anyone here? Uh, if we turn it right up, Mad Frank, off you go, buddy. Let's see what we have got in here to look at. It's very, very close and up to the top of the surface. So maybe there's a neural vacuolizer in there. Beautiful. Let's dig that out. And who? Well, I mean, I, th I think we only really have one option, right? Oh, meteors. Conley achievement earned. Which wonder is this? Let me know. Let me know. Okay, discover the database entry by inspecting the family. That was that was ages ago, was it not? I, I went and had a look at the desk. Well, okay, let's do it again. Searching through the computer, find some recoverable files that's still readable. Uh, okay, and then we'll do it again. Inspect. Oh, I already took everything. Well, let me let me see the the entry. All right, here comes the archaeological crew now. Should be able to get into that neural vacuolizer pretty, pretty quickly. Oh, we've been watching Brom since the morning. You might look up at the cycle indicator and notice that we are quite a far way through the day. And Brom is... He's untrained, shall we say. He hasn't had enough time running around the base and, and learning how to get around in the most efficient of manners. His poor little fresh printed legs, they just they just don't have the uh, the strength and the agility that the other duplicates have built up slowly over time. I mean, can you imagine? We print these guys with fresh, fresh muscles. Not a single shred of exercise has ever been seen by them before. And we expect them just to run around like fully, uh, fully fledged humans. Anyway, we're going to put Brom in the neural vacuolator here. Let's slow, slow that back down. I never noticed how it's called the neural vacuolator, but actually, um, sometimes, more often than not, actually, it gives a physical trait, not a mental trait. Anyway, Brom has been gifted the, the, the gift of a decreased air consumption. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm quickly taking care of a few of the trivial jobs up here, things like bringing the power in. I'm also going to build a little trough here with some drywall behind it, because as you can tell if I press the F4 button, we are in the vacuum of space up here. But these drywall, these drywall will contain uh, a liquid if need be. They will also contain a gas, but the gas will kind of flow and spread in the, the way that gases do. But we could pour a little bit of liquid on the bottom here and uh, set up some sort of thermal swapping system. Uh, now, I've got this off of Francis John, I should point out. I've been watching him a lot recently and almost all his ideas I have been putting into action. Um because whilst I do believe I could just bring some cooling up here via the power of chilled petroleum or ethanol or something like that, uh, if we pass it around, there is no medium for the telescope to pass the heat from this to the radiant pipes. So having a little liquid on below, uh, down below will help that transfer happen. Uh, this little shove hole here. Still not sure what to do about him. But of course, this entire process is waiting on this metal refinery. And for some reason, Forrest is saying he will come down here but what's more important pumping out the last of this gas it turns out and what about you Mimi what's more important for you you are literally on the way beautiful beauty okay there we go it's being made no workable order is the next order why power cooling what what's the problem uh, waiting on deliveries and everyone well it's downtime but everyone is a long way away we need we need an operator and we need a supplier these these are two well in particular the supplier this this is a duplicate we really really need half a cycle oh this 
This might become a bit of a problem up here. Look how hot this mafic rock is. It's about 150 degrees. I noticed this because there was this going on over here. And I was like, oh, what's going on? Oh, look at all this melting. And I was thinking that it was the temperature coming up here. But then I pressed F3 and I was like, oh, I see the problem here. So let's get some uh, insulated tiles out and maybe try and stop this. Anyway, I noticed that because I am up here. I want to get into the automation and I want to come down. I want to find a space scanner. Now, this is the item that will tell us whether there are meteors on the way or not. Also, did a little cap here to try and keep our shove vol. Philip, maybe? I don't know. Let's Names and suggestions for the shove vault if we're going to keep it. Uh, to keep him out of the base. Uh, so, yeah, we're going we're to do that. I'm going to essentially end up digging all of this out. So that will be cool. Uh, and you can see that we're still pretty much not ready to be making these bunker doors. We're at uh, 375 out of 500. But I'm totally going to pop that like that. Oh, he's making a break for it. He's on the way. In an effort to streamline the steel building process, I'm going to install one of these auto sweepers here. And I've also split out the storage of all the various uh, items needed for making steel across these storage bins here. This should mean that Jelly will no longer be bringing a measly 10 kilograms of lime at a time. And we've got 150 kilograms that need storing somewhere. So you should bring it all down in one, one movement. And that will then uh, refill the metal refinery as needed. And we can just wait for people to come along and use it. And then, then run out of power. The big problem I've got is, other than this one here, I do believe almost all my geysers are dormant again, which is, you know, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, this one's dead. This one's very quiet. Oh, oh uh, two of my natural gas geysers are up, it turns out, but we're not producing the big watts. I mean, eternal shame, this is not producing quick enough. I mean, we're very nearly there. The petroleum is down to 205, and we're going to let it through at 200. So how about if I put this to uh, 210? Will that bring us to the right sort of speed? We'll find out. All right, I'm not even going to take the chance with this one. We are sweeping him up nice and quick. I'm going to watch it like a hawk, because of... Well, what happened there? Did we see him get bound up and then unbound? I think it's because we've got too many in here. Oh, okay, that's that's crazy. Did, did, did anybody else see that? I saw that. Great. Weird. Weird. All right, Mimi is our care package carrier. This should go out pretty well. Hopefully, we'll just get down there and then throw it out, as we normally do. It's, it's, it's a pretty standard standard uh, course of action i could probably do with putting a auto dispenser down here you know the thing that kind of throws out the stuff on the floor but you know we'll we'll work on that at some point all right there he is that oh that give me give me the camera back thank you very much all right that now means that we've got two down here one at 25 and one at 74 i'm also going to build this uh this career drop off again because we were totally seeing some of these guys get wrangled up right let's see what we can do about that it looks like, yeah, it could definitely be a thing. We're going to watch this uh, this list of jobs here, see how, how well it counts down. Okay, here comes Brum, and he is about to... Yeah, look, he's going to do it, he's going to do it. I thought this wasn't a thing. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, now how do we get them down below? Let's, uh, let's go and have a look down here. It's not great that this is about to break. Not operational. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to figure out something about that. Got too hot down here. I would just be like, oh yeah, make it out of steel, but it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> I haven't got enough. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, Cubic? Cubic, please, please stop. I'm going to move you back down here. He's got the lava egg and he tried to take it away. I'm not, not about that. Let's go and find the incubation and turn that right down. Oh, it is already all the way down. How is Cubic like, yeah, yeah, that's my job. Oh, man, I, I have no idea. Uh, maybe disable the building because I just, I don't want that to happen right now. What I do want to happen, though, is over here, this just got repaired, and let's uh, let's ask all of our people to start moving these critters around. Yeah, okay, I like it. I love it. Nighttime's been cooled, but I am not about that life. Okay, Mad Frank's picked one up. Beautiful. Here comes Luna, also beautiful. And a Cypher got the last one. Awesome. Come all the way back down here to the uh, little drop-off point. Hopefully, hopefully we're going to get this dealt with before it gets too hot. Uh, how much hotter is it in here? It's like 71 over here. How can it be so much hotter over this side? All right, Slickster's away. Oh, that's... That's amazing. That is just the best. <laughs> oh. 
we've, we've got no power being produced? What is this about? How is there no power being produced? Is this just locking it away in it? So, so yeah, this is in its own little self-cycling system here. Why is it draining so much power? What happens when it loses that? It must be because of the aqua tuner over here. Hmm. What happens when it bottoms out? Are we going to be... Are we going to have trouble? I'm not sure if it can bottom out. Okay, we, we appear to be just about consuming more than we're making but I'm not, I'm not sure about that mm. okay got a little late last night and i decided to carry on ahead and just do a few things that we could up here including building the bunker doors and if i pull this back out making this corridor come all the way over here it's not quite all the way is it let's uh let's go ahead and do that but the reason that i stopped last night and the reason i was doing it was because oh man this this little episode right here is taking a lot lot longer than i thought of we are currently at hour six of recording Oh, it's a lot. It is a lot. But that's okay, because I will do this for you guys. Mostly, we are waiting for the steel to be made. Uh, but as I said, we went ahead and did those things. And we've got two colony achievements for doing so. Give me, give me those praises and adulations. You can see that we did pulling back the veil. Reveal 80% of the map by exploring outside the starting biome. Done that. Beautiful. But also immovable object. Block a meteor from hitting your base using a bunker door. I didn't know that happened. This bunker door, These two bunker doors got built. Uh, I noticed that we've got some damage down here. So obviously, at some point, there has been something going on up here but i i didn't think i had anything to do with it but it's there i clicked this again because uh I, it said that we had another one but i think it was just it didn't know how to deal with the two at once all right the next thing we need to do of course no not plumbing is ventilation we need to run ourselves an oxygen line up here and i think actually we're going to bring it in this way so the plan for stealing oxygen for the telescope actually revolves around this bit down underneath our base up here. Uh, this is where all the different oxygen streams come together. And the first thing I do is try and pass it to the base. Uh, we have had situations where the base does get completely backed up. And when that happens, this piece of pipe here is going to take our precious, precious payload of oxygen all the way up here and pass the, the hydrogen down spike spout sorry to bring it to this telescope now the telescope is looking pretty good but we need to do a couple of other things if i turn this bottle empty around we need to try and get some liquids down the bottom here i was talking about this uh last time that we spoke uh you know in a few few moments ago in the video you know we were we were doing the chatting thing uh and i was saying that we need to put some liquids down below here i'm Thinking maybe some petroleum. Petroleum is nice and easy to get a hold of. Not too hard to move around. Maybe some crude oil. I mean, it's not like we're actually going to be boiling any of those liquids here. It's uh, maybe even maybe even some ethanol. Mainly because I've got ethanol right down here, ready to be taken at a moment's notice. So can we can we pop this in here anywhere? Uh, probably if we move some of these other things out of the way, like the ladders. Down at the metal refinery. I've paused the game so you know there's a bit of an issue on the go. We've got petroleum starting to really build up a little bit of heat here. You can see 275. And the thing is, this temperature just keeps on going up. And if we go in and have a look at the petroleum, we've only got until about 500 degrees before it decides to flash into sour gas. Which, you know, we're only halfway there, but I would like to do something a little bit more clever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along. I'm going to put all of these on the super high priority because, you know, that's clever. Uh, also, I have rearranged the pipe network in here to give us more more uh, more abilities to dump as much heat in here as possible so let's go and see what happens hopefully everybody's going to go uh, around and do the things that need doing jelly immediately coming in to knock this open of course we're not that bothered by how much steam gets escaped because this uh, atmosphere sensor here is trying to make sure that there is enough pressure in here to keep the whole system a turning over what we are worried about of course is all of these radiant pipes i'm hoping the moment that people oh mimi's coming along to uh, to do a little little bit of uh, metal refining there that's kind of cool, but we really need to get all this lot turned over and uh, nicely fixed here. Okay, who is on the jobs? Brum, my slowest walker. Thanks very much, buddy. Tell, tell me we've got some faster people out there. All right, Mad Frank is on the way. That's pretty good. Oh, look, we've also got Forrest down here. Okay, that's that's super cool. Super, super cool. Of course, by cool, very much meaning hot. This is all very hot over here, and we need to deal with it as fast as possible. <laughs> Okay, here's Mad Frank, but where is Brum? Brum, you, you're you the last guy. Oh, look at him all the way back here. Go on, man. I, I believe in you. You can do this. Might take you a while, but you can do it. All right, so that is those into place. The wire, the, the pipes, sorry, are very nicely going around. The entire area that they are able to go through, I should probably wipe out these little bits of extraneous pipe at some point. Need to get these uh, these tiles put back into place again at the highest priority possible. But there are two things that I two numbers that I want to be able to have a look at here. You can see we're coming out at about 400 degrees 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But I'm hoping we come through out of here at about 200 degrees. Let's have a look. 200 and... I mean, that's good. That's good. I'll take that. That's that's beautiful. That is very beautiful. If anything, I think we're chilling down as we go through here. So, of course, for those of you who weren't quite up to the full logic of what was happening here, we, we have a, a set amount of coolant that goes through this metal refinery. And the, the coolant then comes up and through this chill box, trying to use the radiant pipes to get the uh, temperature of the coolant, in this case, petroleum down to the same temperature as the steam back here unfortunately we didn't have enough pipe going through so the rate of exchange of heat wasn't enough to bring the temperature down far enough by the time we left so i needed to put the wire the the pipes going around much more space much like this uh, so that we could exchange more heat and bring the temperature down faster because the heat generated here was more than the heat we were losing to the box and now i think it's the other way around so that's cool oh brum because you had to go down to the bottom of the map, you're starving. <laughs> He's so slow. So slow. This is the second heavy watt join plate I found overloaded. Despite the fact that the wire can go up to 20k and we can only go up to 14k. I'm wondering whether the heavy join, join plate actually has a lower lower throughput than the than the heavy watt wire. But it's not, it's not telling us that anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, the function of the regular tile allows heavy wire to run through the floor and tile, but it doesn't say anywhere that it is less less uh, capable than the wire. I think I might replace this, though it's quite a bit of a mission, so maybe not right now. I need to try and put it up here, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. If it takes more damage, we'll definitely come back. So whilst these two missile and Mad Frank are making their way up the gas pipe, they're also going to be dropping off all these uh, sedimentary rocks. So I was having a look up here to find little uh, deposits of sedimentary rocks. So Miss can come along, do the dig, and then everybody else can... Well, everybody else, Mad Frank, can come along, do the deliveries and the build afterwards. And this should mean that we get up this pipe a little bit faster than when we were doing the hydrogen return line. Oh, wow, it took him long enough, but Brum has finally walked his way up to here. I think it literally took him an entire cycle to walk up here. Uh, and we're going to turn this off now, because that, that's probably it. That's probably the amount of liquids we want down here. Let's have a look. We've got about 20 kilos per tile. Let's check on this side. Give or take, it's about 20 kilos. All right, cool. That's, that's going to go really well. We probably want to break this down now. Let's, let's deconstruct. Look, here's another one. Why are these overloading, but everything else is fine? I don't get it. Oh dear. Oh, miss, how... How did you get up there, miss? What's going on? I don't... I don't even see how you did that. I'm assuming you've come through here and dug your way up. Is that... Is that what's happened? Maybe. I mean, if Regolith falls on a dupe, do they get shunted to the top? It's a question to ask. Okay, let's see what happens. She wakes up and she's unrested. That's fine. Making her way down. She does need the toilet, but I think everything is heading in the direction that we need it to be heading in right now. Okay, cool. That's that's very good. I was super, super worried that we were going to have some troubles there, but no, that is the case. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Let's have a click on this telescope, shall we? Because we have done everything it's asking us to do, apart from open the star map. And now we want to... I don't know if you guys are aware of what's going on here. This is the, the sky above our asteroid. As you can see, it goes on for quite a long dark time there's there's all sorts of stuff going on up there space it's infinite it's not in this game but it's pretty infinite so but we've, we've only got a certain range that we can scan with our telescope and i'm gonna just go with this one it's the first one it's on the left i come from a left to right society so we're gonna go ahead and do that and i want to analyze that object now it's gonna give me all sorts of problems and reasons why i can't do that but we're just gonna go ahead and do that first off all right beautiful we've got reduced visibility out there ensure an unblocked view of the sky is available to star map data visibility nine percent scan radius five cells that uh, scan radius of course is the distance from each uh, direction of which to go. 9% is because it can only see out through this one little gap here. But unfortunately, until these uh, bunker doors get built, that that's all I'm going to give it. That is all I'm going to give it. <laughs> now, the question I've got is, is this temperature just constantly clicking up? Let's have a look at the properties. Let's try and find the temperature. Now, how are we going to know if that clicks up by 0.1? 13.5. We'll, we'll look at it in a bit. Okay, this was a failed experiment. Let's just share it out equally. I was kind of hoping that the base would back up. You can see how now that we've got all of these turning over that there is a lot of oxygen backing up. And we have seen that situation before, but it's just not quite as going as well as I would hope. So let's try this. Let's get this gas bridge. Let's destroy it at the highest priority. Hopefully someone's going to come along. Shrapticus was right there. And now if we keep an eye on it, this should turn up. The reason that I have done that, if I... Uh, is it shift one or control one? 
Shift one. It, the button that I want is shift one. Wham! I've put the little way mark, waypoint marker up here. And the reason that these guys aren't coming up to work on it, if we go over to the errand, low priority. No, it should have been no oxygen. That's what it was on a second ago. There we go. Not enough oxygen. Uh, Forrest has finally reached up to the high enough priority that he wants to come along and do it. But there's no oxygen in the line. And that's why I changed the way that we were sharing the oxygen out here. Ah, here it comes. Beautiful. No doubt this will uh, end up with us having no gases in the base, but this will do for now. All right, it's taken an awful long time to get here, and we've only really built a sort of horrifically manual version, but let me show you what we've got here. We've got a whole bunch of bunker doors up the top to protect us from the meteors. This you know already. Down below, we've got a little catch pad to grab all the regolith that happens when we open the doors. Now, how are we deciding what doors open and close? Well, that is the space scanner's job. Uh, it detects meteor showers, and when the meteor showers come, it gives us a green signal to tell things to close or whatever. The problem with that is if we come that have a look up here the input the green signal would be open open during the meteor storm it's totally not what we want so the first thing we need to do is come along and give this a little knock gate so that we can put this in the right order i think we're going to go follow this 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 line of uh, wires that we've got going up here uh, and we're going to try and make these bunker doors open and close automatically now unfortunately We've uh, we've not got enough of these space scanners. The space scanners themselves will give this signal, give the warning, uh, sometime in advance of the meteor shower. I believe it's something between 32 seconds and 200 seconds. Now, that, those values are dependent on how many scanners you have connected up to your scan network. The, ne the, ne the lowest value it can give... Oh, well, in detect incoming objects up to one second before they arrive. There we go. That's exactly what I mean. One second is much, much sooner than these doors have to close. So this will give a signal, the meteors will start raining and the doors are still closing. So we need to get another one in place. I'm not gonna do that today. Oh, well, that'll be that'll be part of next time. But the thing I do wanna do is get this, all this into place and get that telescope turning so I can show you the end process. And I'm totally gonna just do this. So the wire's in place and the incoming object was detected, but I think literally just as I've spoken, it has changed its state. Let's have a look at the automation layer here. Okay, so yeah, it's no longer detecting and all these are starting to open up. Uh, oh, I've... I've got a power issue. Why is my power? Because I'm suddenly drawing all this power at once, right? But mm, that's not great. The next thing we need to do is try and get people to come and dig out all the regolith that's just about to fall down. I'm going to wait until this door opens. Let's see how long that takes, shall we? Man, with the uh, power outages, they took quite a long time, even at full speed. So I now need to dig all of this out, and I actually need to do this very, very importantly, because that will then give us access to the telescope. I really want to get the telescope functioning. I really, I really want to get the telescope functioning. <laughs> So that's all the regolith clear. Ah, uh, it's not night time, is it? No, no, no. I thought I thought I felt the daylight drop down there. But what's gonna happen? Where is ah? Oh, here he is, my boy Forrest himself, about to go and get our research done. I've never never really turned the telescope on before. I would like to see or oh, what happens, what it looks like. Are we gonna have any sort of problems with uh, restricted field of view because of like the uh, the debris or anything like that? It looks like not. Beautiful, beautiful. And look, we even got a little yellow bar going across the bottom. Ah, uh, the telescope does deploy, and then you run away because of downtime. Ah, because of downtime. Oh dear, and this is the problem with only having one hand power that keeps dropping out. Sometimes things make it through. Destroys the ladder, that's not too bad, but more importantly, it's getting at these tiles underneath, and that is kind of bad. Is Forrest still getting... Well, I mean, he's got some reduced visibility, but he's at it. He's, he's doing it. Oh. Ow. Ow, that's some big things. Some serious things. We, we need power and we need power now. <laughs> so we've gone and got ourselves don't, don't mind Brum wetting himself we've gone and got, him, got ourselves into a bit of a, a bit of a disastrous situation here where we don't have the power lines connected to be able to close the doors and there's a meteor shower on the on the way so every time we do fix something it breaks again yay Okay, it's taken us yet another long while to get here, and repairs are going on all around us. But we are finally at the point where the telescope is up and operational. I think maybe, just maybe, we might even get that first scan done. Oh, that is beautiful. So we come back over here, open that star map again. Uh, we've got ourselves a carbon asteroid. What does that mean? I actually don't know. It means that we've got all of this available to us anyway. But the first thing I want to do is set up another analyze object and say... 
thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next, guy, next time where we're going to figure out what's going on with the telescope data, how we can take advantage of that, how to set up uh, an automatic regolith sweeping system, and also how to get the scan network quality up. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!